Hey everybody, today we're talking about rest. Not the sleeping kind, but the rest that's used all over the web today. If you don't know, it stands for Representational State Transfer, and this is basically a way for different applications or systems to communicate over the internet using protocols like HTTP. So it's essentially the language or communication system for these apps to use. If that sounds a little bit abstract, then just stick with me. We're going to go through an example that I think will help a lot. But you'll also hear of REST API. You can think of REST as kind of the architectural style or design. So the principles, kind of bigger picture. And then the REST API, or Application Programming Interface, this is a specific implementation of REST. So if I have the site or app at example.com and I want to publish data or receive data from other places in the world, then I would create a REST API at api.example.com. Now we're going to dive into methods and parameters and resources and all of that, but first let's walk through an example that you have surely lived in the real world, and that's dining in at a restaurant. So you're at a table with a menu, you want food from the kitchen, and your gracious waiter or waitress is going to make that happen. He or she is basically the API, they are the communication mechanism between you and the kitchen. So they'll take your order, the thing that you request, they're going to walk it back to the kitchen, and then once the kitchen has done the work and made the food, the waiter will return the food, the response, if you will, back to your table. And this is basically how a REST API works as well. So just changing the terms here a little bit, rather than table and kitchen, we have client and server. Client will usually be a web browser or a mobile app, and the server is the computer that's running code and serving up data for the application. The waiter is the API who enables these requests and responses. And let's not forget about the menu. This is basically the API documentation. It's the list of things that you can order and the instructions on how to order them. Okay, so now that we have a basic idea of this communication pattern, dining in in a restaurant, let's take this into a mobile app for ordering food. The structure is going to be the same, and our API is going to be published at api.restaurant.com, just as an example. But let's start by seeing what's available to order. We want to look at the menu, basically. To do this, we need to send a request. So let's talk about requests in a little bit more detail. They have several components. First is the HTTP method, basically the action that you want to take. If you've done any work with databases or even other programming languages, you might be familiar with the acronym of CRUD. So create, read, update, and delete. And there are equivalents for this in the HTTP methods. So if you want to create something, like a new order or a new customer in the system, that's going to be a post method. To read, you're going to use get. To update, you'll use put. And then delete is just plain old delete. It's the same thing. You're also going to need a URL to the API, like api.restaurant.com. The header, this can contain things like the content type, whether it's JSON or text or HTML or CSS, the format really of the thing that you're sending. And the header can also contain things like authorization information, username and password, tokens, and so on. And then the request can also have parameters, and we'll see an example of that in just a minute. Okay, so putting all of that together for a request to see the menu, we're going to use the get method, the URL of api.restaurant.com, and then slash menu in this case, which is the resource that we want to retrieve. Now the name of quote unquote menu is going to depend on how the API was built. I'm just making this up. It could be called something else. But we're going to keep it simple and say menu. The app is going to fetch the menu from the server and send back the options. These will come back as JSON code, which is a common lightweight data format. But it looks like we have three things on the menu, pizza, salad, and bolognese. What else do you need, right? Okay, let's do another example, this time for placing an order. We want a margarita pizza, which is ID number one. If we go back to the menu, it's this item right here. So ID number one. To create an order, we're going to be using the post method. The URL here will be slash orders. And then we need to send in the data for what we want. So the ID again was one, and the quantity is also going to be one. In addition, we need to send in the customer information so the restaurant knows who's ordering it. Now, as far as how you know what to send in, that's in the API documentation. For a real-world example, let me just show you the Uber Eats documentation. 
a popular food ordering app that closely matches our example. So here is the Git menu API documentation. And you'll see up here, we're going to api.uber.com. Their URL is a little bit more complex than ours, but this is the URL you would need to use to look at the menu. And if you scroll down, you'll see different parameters here, response parameters, a lot of different detail. But basically, for whatever API you're using, you'll need to go out to the documentation, figure out the URLs to use, the parameters to send in, data types, and all of that stuff. So hopefully that helps make it more real. All right, so we send this request with all of the required information that we know from the documentation. The server is going to create a new order and assign it an ID. In this example, it's ID 101, and it'll return that with a message. Success. All right, now let's see how to make updates using the API to add a Caesar salad to our order. But before we do that, go ahead and hit that like button for me if you're finding this helpful so far. It lets YouTube know that this is worth sharing with other people. Thank you so much. Okay, to the salad. For this one, we're going to be updating the order, which is the put method. We'll use slash orders, and then we also need to send in the parameter for our specific order, which was 101. So slash orders slash 101. And this is where the parameters come in in the request. That's an example. And then we basically need to submit the entire order again. So we previously had the pizza, which was ID 1. And now we're adding the salad, which is ID 2. But this brings us to an important point, which is that REST APIs are stateless, meaning each request is independent. In the real world, this would mean that your waiter doesn't remember who you are or your previous orders which would be kind of annoying in the real world, but that's how it works with REST. So you need to provide all necessary details with each request. Okay, but we sent in all the necessary details, the server did its thing, and we get back a success message for order ID 101. All right, and then finally, canceling an order. Here we're using our fourth and final method, which is delete. The URL is gonna be slash orders slash 101. So again, a specific parameter the server will delete the order and send us back a message. So there you have it. Here's a summary of the different actions, methods, URLs, and purposes that we went through for this particular food ordering app. I hope that helps you understand REST a little bit better on the web and how you would interact with the REST API. If you like content like this, consider subscribing to the channel and get notified when I post future videos. Thank you so much for watching.